Over the past four years of uploading YouTube videos, I've been known to go through motorcycles like toilet paper. Buying, selling, trading. It's something that I get a kick out of and has constantly brought fresh content to the channel. I mean, let's be real. If I would have stayed doing the same things that I started with, we wouldn't be where we're at today. Not only in numbers, but more importantly, in the experiences that we've had. From dirt bikes to groms, Harleys, sport bikes and scooters, I've gotten the chance to test out a bike in pretty much every category. I still need to get my hands on a proper adventure bike though. In my early life, I was quite materialistic, holding on to pointless possessions, always worried about losing things, and attached so much value to objects rather than experiences. It eventually got to the point where having so much stuff was exhausting. When you have kept the same pack of unused pencils from the book fair back in elementary school, you know you got a problem. Years later, I am still far from a minimalist, but I am getting there, and let me tell you, it feels damn good. At the end of the day, stuff is exactly that, just stuff, and most of it can be replaced. But out of all of the motorcycles that I have bought and sold, there is one that I still find myself missing. As a matter of fact, it's not technically even a motorcycle, but a land yacht of a scooter. That's right, out of all of the expensive toys that I've had, this is the one machine that I just had to get my hands on again. As you can see, we are back in rural Ohio, but here in another week, we will be carving the beautiful mountain roads in Tennessee. And while I thought about taking the Husqvarna, I really wanted something more streetable. We're headed down during the Small Bore Rally, which is a spin-off of the legendary event held by Man in the Box. As the name implies, minis are the subject, and for these tight winding twisties, they just make sense. So in my daily routine, I hopped on Facebook Marketplace and started the search. I had a few rigs in mind, but always came back to the one of a kind, Honda Helix. Now I gotta give a very big shout out to my number one supporter, my mom. She actually went on this Marketplace mission solo and sealed the deal on this 1996 barn find of a Helix. There's the beast. Horsepower. <laughs> <laughs> Little bit. <laughs> that happen? We're gonna call it the Red Rocket from now on. Also known as the Fusion or Spazio, the CN250 was introduced from Honda Japan in 1986. This was one of the first of its kind, primarily catered to the middle-aged market and designed for comfort and long-range touring. With a disc brake in the front and the obnoxiously long wheelbase, it stopped on a dime and rode like a Cadillac. The overall aesthetic was a love-hate, but to me, the retro vibe just can't be replicated, and I find myself looking back at this thing every time I walk away. The performance. Now, I'm not a huge speed guy. I've ridden leader bikes at triple digits, sent dirt bikes up massive hill climbs, but on the road, I've always had more fun with less. That being said, the 244cc liquid-cooled two-valve four-stroke is no slouch, and the V-Matic transmission gets you up to a top speed of around 70 miles an hour with ease. Coming in at almost 350 pounds, the Helix is a tank of a scooter. But the way Honda designed the steering angle and ergonomics, this boat loves to dive into the corners and eats pavement like a proper canyon carver. Combined with the looks and pure nostalgia, there is something about this oddly shaped land yacht that just gets me off. I know the high won't last forever, but when I tell you that this is the most fun machine that I've ever ridden, I mean it. And the looks that you get, the conversations that it brings, just makes it all the better. And I really hope I can bring her with me on the road next time around. As with everything right now, prices are increasing, but if you're lucky, you can find one of these in mint condition for around $1,500. I'm gonna end this video out with some raw riding clips. I've got some pretty wild plans for the old Red Rocket, and be sure to drop a comment and a like on this video if you are excited to have one of these back. I hope I could share some of this happiness with you, and until the next video, live free and adventure daily.
But you heard that right. We are bringing this thing to Tennessee. We're going to ride the tail of the dragon on the freaking Helix, man. I'm pumped. But we're also going to try to find Lex something. And my buddy Grandma Juan has a scooter as well. So we all scootered out. We are the scooter gang. And we're just going to have a damn good time. Squirrel! Oh shit, splat. But yeah, this thing's gonna be amazing in the twisties. Curious to see how fast we can do the dragon on this thing. But I do have some different tires coming in that's gonna make it a little bit more difficult, but you guys will see the bigger picture. I really need to figure out how far I can lean this thing. Maybe we'll do that really quick. Like what is the, oh yeah, dude. <laughs> you can get this thing down pretty damn far. I just do not want to low side this. Like if I just get a little bit too low with the wheelbase, I think I'm getting launched. Maybe not, you'll have to let me know, but that is a fear that I do have with this thing because it is fun to get low in the corners. I don't know if it's the handlebars, just the ergonomics of the steering, but this thing dives into the corners. Do a little top speed run really quick. Boy! <laughs> <laughs> oh, we at 69, baby. We stuck at 69. What's going on, Helix? We got 71 through here the other day. Come on, come on, come on, come on, baby. Let's see them 70. Oh, no. I don't know if it's the humidity or what. But yeah, we got a minor exhaust leak. And it'll backfire a bit on deceleration, which can actually destroy the exhaust. Oh, <laughs> that was brutal. My old Helix, the black one, had a really bad exhaust leak and we were limited at like 65 miles an hour. So I don't want to get back to that point. I need to order the exhaust gasket, but I got to tear it apart, make sure I'm ordering the right one. And I don't know if I'm going to have time before Tennessee because we're leaving in less than a week. So we'll deal with that when I get back, I guess. But I've already got some parts ordered for this thing. We're going to do a little build. And like I said, once you see my tire choice, you'll kind of understand what's going on here. Whoa, 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 <laughs> baby, yeah. <laughs> the brakes on this thing are ridiculous. This is honestly the quickest stopping bike that I've ever had. Like, look at this. <laughs> Dude, what was that, like 40 to zero skid in the front tire? Oh my God, it's wet today too. This is stupid. <laughs> oh my God. The potholes destroy this thing. But I'm really excited to ride this down on the mountains. Every time that I'm there, I'm on an uncomfortable bike. I take that back. The CB300F was a pretty comfortable bike and I actually might be getting another one. Kind of fell into a deal. But like I said, it is a Grom or mini event. But to be honest, I had the most fun on the CB300F, which I would still consider small bore. But just being able to do highway speeds we rode more the comfort to the groms man at least for me my back is killing me after a day of riding dragging them toes boy <laughs> so i think this is kind of going to give me a similar feeling because like i said we can do 70 so we're not really limited as far as which roads we can go on we can do a little bit of everything and my god is this thing comfortable i can just be laid back chilling so it's just gonna motivate me to get out and ride more and have fun and i can't wait to see some of the looks that we get i know there's another dude that has a youtube channel and he also takes his helix so maybe we'll link up and do a little helix cruise but it is man it's just the novelty aspect the looks that you get but ultimately the way this thing rides too i am not kidding this thing rides amazing the way this thing delivers power it almost feels like it has a turbo because it's got a little bit of a lag but as soon as the damn thing engages this thing freaking launches like a red rocket man yeah buddy yeah <laughs> we got the japanese scooter baby shout out to cycle cruiser this thing's also really good for filming too with not having the clutch you can literally just have the camera in the other hand and i can get some footage of some other people that's for professionals only now but i really only do this stuff out in the middle of nowhere as you can see that we haven't passed a single car but it is really nice to have around you know eventually someday would i like a road glide or i'd honestly thought about getting a gold wing the only thing that turns me off on that is just the weight, man. The thing is obnoxious. I'm not gonna wanna do some of the things that I do on this. Once again, you're just gonna have to wait to find out. But this is really just a perfect cruiser to keep around. You can throw your woman on the back, dude, if that's what you're into, and you can just cruise in comfort. I've never ridden anything this comfortable. Like the seat is amazing. It's like a mattress under my ass and the ergonomics are just dialed. 
another thing, man, them fuel prices. This thing almost gets 70 miles to the gallon. I had to drop Alexis off to get her car the other day, and I was like, hell, let's take the Helix. We ain't taking the Tundra, man. We're getting eight miles to the gallon in the Tundra. I wasn't sure if the fuel gauge was accurate or not, so I went ahead and got gas and put like $3 in it and then filled it back up. And dude, I don't know how many miles that I've put on it since, but it's been quite a bit, and we're like just reaching a half tank. But this thing is just a blast from the past. It is the DeLorean of scooters. The display, just everything is just retro Japan and I freaking love it. The trunk space is crazy. You got a nice glove box here and you got uh, some options for some speakers. So we gonna be blasting some tunes. Take this thing to Daytona Beach next year, baby. But as you can see, I do have some more clothes on today. Good old Ohio went from 85 degrees and beautiful to raining in the a blink of an eye and yeah i think the high today is only supposed to be like 67 the hell man this is the first time i've seen rain in six months i love arizona i really do it is my favorite state the diversity the fact that you can drive two hours and get into a completely different climate it's really a, a gem and i can't wait to be back it's gonna be my forever winter destination. And trust me, we've got a whole other host of places. I wanna see all 50 states, so slowly but surely we will make that happen. But for the summer, we're gonna enjoy it here in Ohio, spend time with all my friends and family. And then we got a new build to come back to over at Carefree. So once again, as always, we got a lot of exciting stuff to come. I think that's gonna wrap up today's video. I appreciate you all coming on this ride if you made it this far. I just wanted to share some of this excitement with you and let me know down in the comments what you're looking forward to. I hope you have a good weekend and until the next video, we'll see you then. Oh, 72. Shit, we got some wind on the way back. We 73. Ooh. Oh shit, we're coming in hot as fuck. Ooh.